everybody, it's Mackenzie Brown here. I'm here today to talk a little bit about a plunger and how to use it on an Olympic recurve boat. going to do is we're going to kind of go through all the parts and the components and how it moves and then from there what we're going to do is go outside and show you kind of what I do and some of my preferences. So the first thing we're going to do is kind of open the box of a, uh, a biter plunger. This is what I use and I know a lot of my teammates use uh, so we're going to open that up and see what's inside. So what we've got in here is we've got the plunger itself, we've got two different plunger tips that are uh, two different materials, but you have to kind of decide which one you're gonna use. You've got three different stiffnesses on the spring that goes inside. You've got a flathead screwdriver and two wrenches for two different um, adjustments and tightening parts on the plunger. You've got extra components in here that are springs and extra plunger tips in case you wear any of them out or they break or they get too dirty. Um, and then you've got an Allen key with uh, two set screws and two Teflon bits to go into the collar of the plunger. So I think the first thing we should do is take this plunger apart and see how it works and also so you can kind of see how to take one apart and put it back together. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my yellow wrench. So on the yellow wrench you've got two hole spaces on the back and those actually fit perfectly for this nut on the front. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that wrench there and just loosen that to where it's just slightly loose because you want that to stay on that thread that's already on there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that flathead screwdriver and loosen that post. And always do it in that order and in reverse order. When you're tightening or loosening your, um, your plunger and that, that thread, what you wanna do is loosen the nut first and then the post, and then also in reverse order when you're tightening your, your plunger so it doesn't move, you're going to tighten the, the main thread on that post and then tighten the nut on top of that to secure it in place. So then we're just going to take it off. And what you notice is that there's clicks on there and those will come in handy later on when we adjust the plunger. So whenever you take apart equipment, make sure that you have a bench. That way you can see all the components that come off and that you can always put it back together. So uh, just make sure that you can keep track of everything um, because if it comes apart, you can always call Lancaster and get new pieces, but it's always best to keep all of your pieces together. Um, that way you can get back to shooting. So we're gonna go ahead and take this uh, body piece off. Um, so when you pull that piece out, you're gonna have the, um, the spring in there along with the biter tip. When you get your plunger in the package, you're going to have it with the medium spring in there. That's what they always come with. So if you need a stiffer plunger or a weaker plunger, what I do is I take that, uh, that spring and compare it to the other two. When you look at these two, you're gonna see that the, the wire itself is bigger. So when you compare, you've got a really thin wire for the weak uh, spring, you've got a really thick wire for that heavy spring. So if you're ever in doubt, just compare those um, to what you have in your factory setting. And then also in this part, you've got a little bit on the end that helps compress that spring. So that's what, what's happening when you shoot your arrow. The arrow compresses against the plunger tip, it pushes up against that spring, and then because this has nowhere to go, it's, press, it's just compressing that spring nice and even uh, from both sides. So when we're gonna put this back together, we're just gonna put it back in the exact same way that we found it. Um, so if you find when you're tuning that your plunger is not able to be stiff enough, um, then you would go in and put in the stiff spring. Also in the uh, inverse, you would use the weaker spring. Um, so then you would just replace that. But we're just gonna go ahead and put the medium spring back in there. 
Um, again, put that tip in this way and then put that main post right back over all of it. So then when you are putting this back on, what you'll notice is when you get back onto the threads, when, the thre when this um, post hits that thread, you're gonna hear more clicks, so. Those are the clicks that you're gonna feel and hear um, when you're putting it together. But one way that's really easy to be able to keep track of where your plunger is, um, and I would write this down in your notes after you're done tuning, is to look at this post. When you look, there is actually a number five there and a line. If you keep track of that, that's gonna really help you know exactly where your plunger is. And if, you, if for some reason your plunger comes apart, you can put your spring back in and get the exact same feeling out of your plunger. Um, so when you look at that, you're gonna have um, two numbers that you're gonna keep track of. So you're gonna have the five here, that's gonna indicate where, your po where your, um, the collar is on the post. So you're gonna have these lines in between, that's gonna be the numbers that you're counting. And then you're also gonna have the number that's here on this collar to reference where you're at. So I'm just gonna put this at a random setting. So if my plunger is set at this position, it would be six four. So that four is what's even with the rest of the, uh, that flat piece on the plunger post. But then if you look, there's actually, you can see the line that's left of the number five. So that's gonna be six. It's gonna be six lines away from where those, that count starts. So it will be six four. So if for some reason my, my plunger comes apart or I need to put in a new plunger, I know that six four is exactly where my plunger tension needs to be. So again, the, the, the last tip I have, and I mentioned it before, is to make sure that when you are tightening your plunger down, especially for travel, what I would recommend doing is tightening the, the thread down first on the plunger and make sure that that's tight don't over tighten this because that uh, thread actually has a spring within it and a ball bearing. And so it is hollow on the inside. When you look at it there, you can see that there's a ball bearing in the end. So it's actually got a button feel to it. So that's gonna be um, pushing into the threads here to create that click sound that you hear. So you've got the little uh, cutaways and the threads there and that's what that that ball is clicking into. So if you tighten down on that thread too much you can't I've actually broken one of these before so definitely be careful with that um, but to make sure that everything is tightened down correctly you want to make sure that you tighten that thread first and then the nut on top of it. So just like I mentioned, we're gonna go ahead and use that flathead, tighten that thread all the way down, just snug, you don't need it overly tight. And then to make sure that all of this stays in the position that we set it in, um, you're gonna use that yellow wrench again and tighten that nut down. And because we've got that nice uh, plastic collar there or that um, shim there, it'll hold that in place and that, that plunger's not moving. No matter how much I try to move it, it's not going anywhere. So the final thing I wanna show you guys how to move on the biter plunger is gonna be uh, this tension collar. That's what's gonna go right up against the riser on an Olympic recurve bow. So uh, that's what this little bag comes in handy for. It's gonna have that Allen key and then those set screws. So those are extra set screws that come with your biter plunger in case you lose yours, cause they are really tiny pieces. Um, and then they also have those little Teflon bits and uh, that go, those go underneath these set screws just because you don't wanna clamp down um, this metal set screw onto another metal thread because you want to be able to move it. That's why those Teflon pieces are in there so that you can um, tighten down these, these set screws and you're not messing up any threads on that main um, 
post of the plunger. When you're moving this, you want to loosen both of the set screws so that you can freely move this collar. What I recommend doing is loosening it and then moving it with the orange wrench. That's what this is for, is to be able to um, move that collar independently. Um, that's another thing that helps with making sure that that post is tightened first, that that thread is tightened first, and then the, the nut is that that's not moving, my tension's not moving, but I can be moving my collar independently. Uh, so I've got a bow here, and I want to show you guys how this plunger goes into the bow. Uh, so just pretty simple. Screw it in with your fingers first, and then you're going to use the orange wrench and make sure that it's nice and tight. So now that I've showed you how the biter plunger works, I'm going to go outside and we're going to show you some more fun tricks. So now that we're outside, we're going to shoot a little bit and then look at where the groups are. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure our sight's set for 30 meters, and then we're going to shoot and get warmed up and make sure that all of our arrows are grouping really nice and tight. And then we're going to shoot some bear shafts. So we're going to start with just shooting some flat shafts at 30 meters. So now that we've shot at 30 meters, we've got a nice fletched group here and I went ahead and shot some bear shafts. So they're sitting a little bit high right of the group, which means that I've got a little bit of a low knocking point as well as a slightly weak plunger. So this is something that over time I've shot with, I've practiced with, I've tuned and shot multiple scores with, and this is the best setting for me personally. What I look for when I'm using plunger tension to adjust my tune, I'm not going to adjust my plunger if my bear shaft is any bigger than, than about a dish, like a dinner plate size. Um, if it's anywhere within that region, I can definitely use my plunger to fine tune that back into the group. But if it's anything greater than that, I would highly recommend using your tiller instead um, because that's going to change your draw weight a little bit and then also change the spine of your arrow more effectively than just adjusting your plunger and having it in a critical position. So I highly recommend you practicing whatever tune feels right to you. You know, make it a little bit stiffer, make it a little bit weaker, make sure that you try different knocking point settings. Um, so definitely just give it a go, just try whatever you feel like, um, and then score with it, see where it is, write everything down, make sure you keep track of what you're trying and working with. Okay, so I just wanted to kind of show you guys some variations of what you can do with your tune. Um, these are gonna be acceptable variations or things that I would say I would try and test out. So these are gonna be groups at, at 30 meters. I'm gonna show the fletched shafts with an X and then the bare shafts with an O. So I'm going to just show three fletch shafts and then two bare shafts because that's what I normally tune with. So this is gonna be a weak right-handed with a right-handed archer with a low knocking point. This is my preference, this is what I like to shoot. Um, so we're gonna have three X's here at 30 meters, so you got a nice tight group there. And then within a small variance like what I showed you earlier, we're gonna have two bear shafts right there close together. Then for um, the adverse for a left-handed archer, you want a weak arrow um, just like mine, but you're left-handed, so you're gonna have the same group but your bear shafts are gonna be on the opposite side. A weak arrow on a right-handed archer with a high knocking point would be your grouped fletched arrows. And then you're going to have two bear shafts down here. So this means you're gonna have a little bit more pressure on the rest um, some people prefer that and it just works better for them. So again, make sure you test this out, make sure you try it out and do, um, even if you can do some high speed uh, testing with watching how your arrow flies over the rest, that would be really ideal. So again, we're gonna switch over to the left-handed archer, same thing, if you want a, uh, a high knocking point and a weak plunger, you're gonna have your bear shafts over low left. If you want, a stiff, plunge, or a stiff arrow, 
for a right-handed archer with a low knocking point, you're going to have your flat shafts. You're going to have your bare shafts high left. So again, low knocking point moves your, your bare shafts high and then a stiff plunger. Same thing is going to be a stiff left-handed archer with a low knocking point and that's going to be three fletched arrows and then you're going to have a high right bear shaft for the left-handed archer. Then we're going to move to the stiff right-handed archer with a high knocking point. So you've got your three fletched arrows. You're going to have those over here on that left hand side, high knocking point again. So for a stiff left handed high knocking point, you're gonna have your three grouped arrows and then you're going to have a low right bear shaft. So I hope this was really informational for you guys. I hope you, you learned something. Again, this is all things, these are all things that I have tried on my own. I have practiced, I have um, tested this with time and over scoring as well as just um, shooting competitions and see what works best in competition. I recommend you going to your local pro shop and asking help uh, from some of the people who run your local pro shop if you need help. Also, you can always call our tech experts here at Lancaster Archery. They're going to be able to help you with some of these fine-tuning things. Um, but thank you for watching today. I hope you like this video. If you do, make sure you like it. And also subscribe to Lancaster Archery's YouTube page. If you want to know more about our videos and want to see the ones that are coming up, make sure you hit that notification bell to be notified for more videos. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. <laughs> components that are coming off of the plunger. So when you've when you're taking apart a plunger, you want to make sure that you Okay, see if that works. <laughs>